the CM Jump Start. This is the place where we recharge the batteries of your children's ministry before the light completely grows dim. <laughs> I'm Dan Matier. I'm Brett Colby. This is episode, no, it's season three, episode one. This is the Jump, CM Jumpstart podcast has lived, survived, thrived yeah. even for two full years. Two full years. We're starting year three, so we're going season three, episode one. Yes, yeah, so mix it up a little bit for those of you keeping track at home. Yeah. And I'm excited. Dan, summer's over. You have a good summer? I have had a great summer. I kind of had to reintroduce myself to my uh, church staff because I was gone a lot. <laughs> a lot of camps, yes. a lot of VBS, but that's, you got to use summer while it's there. Did, now, I imagine you saw a lot of fun things at camp. Yeah. What was one of the most craziest camp moments where you're like, ah, this, is this really happening? Is this? Yeah. You know, I think it had to be at, at, at our camp. That, yeah. uh, as the pudding was being washed <laughs> out of the t-shirt cannon with salad and ketchup and gummy frog toward my face. I yeah. think that was the craziest thing. And, and then the, the gummy <laughs> frog shaped welt I had left on my, uh, on my skin. But you have to back the story up because it starts with a uh, lunch that featured lemon pudding. Lemon pudding. Not abnormal, but inside the lemon pudding was hidden Gummy frogs, yeah, and not like little tiny cute gummy bear, Big but ones. like like this size of gummy frog. Like you had to get a steak knife. And <laughs> so as kids were scooping it, you get like half a frog like hanging on this food, and these and they absorb like the the uh, the fluid from the pudding. So like toward the end of the meal, they were like expanding Swelled, and growing. Yeah. It was it was exciting. And for some reason, we put it in cannons and shot it at us. So that was crazy. What about you? What what was the crazy thing you saw? Uh, the craziest thing I saw. Well, I got to speak in Kansas. And there was a proper like Kansas storm rolled in on our camp to the to the degree where everyone said, "Everybody get inside, in get yeah. inside!" Yeah, so that was like my first tornado warning. And everything's so flat out there. Like you hear, it's so flat in Kansas. It is. It's yeah. flat in Kansas. Yeah. Where everyone could stand on the porch and literally like point to there's the storm coming in, and you could just see it, see it coming at you because there's nothing obscuring your view of what might be the end of your life. I had a similar experience in Minnesota. Why do they even go to camp in the Midwest? <laughs> it's, it's, get... it's dangerous. Yeah. Well, anyway. So it was a fun I... summer. And like you, had a bunch of camps and uh, had a great time. But I'm ready for the fall. This okay. is my favorite time. When I get outside in the morning and the ground is wet, it's been raining all yeah. night. Yeah. I love that smell. And it's quite, even when I'm sitting down just watching it rain, I love it. It's beautiful. Well, you live in the right place then. I do. And we I get do. that a lot. Yeah. You, you did some reading this summer though, right? I did. Okay, so one book I wanted to highlight a little bit. It's an incredible book. It's called Leading on Empty by Wayne Cordero. Have you okay. read this by any I've chance? I've never. I've read some Wayne Cordero, but never this. I'm going to hand that to you. In fact, I, I wrote a little review on it. I'm just going to pull it up because it kind of shows um, It shows a cover of the thing here real quick on the telly behind us. So um, here's where I wrote the review, and it should be right here. So Leading on Empty, um, subtitled Refilling Your Tank and Renewing Your Passion. This book was excellent. In fact, it's one of those books that's written specifically to pastors and just gives a bunch of warnings about burnout and being exhausted and what it would take to renew your passion for the ministry. And Wayne Cordero's story is one that you've heard lots of times, extremely successful, growing on any way that you would measure it, it's a home run. And he pushes so hard to a point where he burns out. And he tells his story of recovery, the impact it had on his marriage and his mm. family, some things that he did. But in it, he includes a bunch of warning signs. Yeah. And I was reading it, and I'm one, I push myself pretty hard. Um, I think sometimes I'm guilty of pushing my family a little hard when it comes to different events and things like that. And I was just convicted. Um, it, it brought up some good discussions between my wife and I, even the basic discussion of what refuels your tank. Well, yeah. I know what I need. Like, I need some alone time. I need to write a little bit. I need to get up early and have a coffee, like be left alone. I need to do some family stuff. Like, there's some, I know I'm really aware of like what refuels my tank. Yeah. And my wife is great at helping me have those moments, but I'm not good at necessarily asking my wife, like, hey, what refuels your tank? You know? And so that was one of you're busy being alone, refueling your tank. I yeah. know. And, and, you know, ironically, I think for a lot of our marriages, what is helpful to one is not necessarily helpful to the other. Uh -huh. So we sat down, we had some of those conversations, you know, That's what, good. what do you need? What refuels your tank? And it's really helped. And I, and I think, um, done a lot for the longevity of my ministry. Of course, I've not mastered everything he's sure. written about in there. So I have a long ways to go, but 
That is an excellent read. I would highly recommend for anyone. And it was just, it was really challenging. Yeah. It was, it was a highlight of my summer for sure. Yeah. You know, it might be interesting if I headed out and maybe interviewed Wayne Cordero. Where does he pastor? Uh, is he in uh, Hawaii, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. That, that's great. You'll do what it takes. I'll do what it takes. No, that that's really good. And we can find that review at BrentColby.com. BrentColby.com. Right? Posted it up there. Uh, I read a lot and I try to write a review of everything I read just to give a, an account for my you know, yeah. myself in that way. Something on the market. That's great. Yeah. Good. Well, you know what? We're going to uh, uh, be jumping into an interesting topic today that was inspired by by this book, partly by this book. This is the Brick Bible. Yes. The New Testament. It's online at, uh, at brickbible.com, I think. Um, but one of the interesting things about this, Legos are hot yep. right now, and they have been for, what, 30 years. I don't know. They've oh, never yeah, not been time. hot about when I was a kid. Um but but this is the Bible illustrated with Legos. Yes. Uh, if you have a young boy, this is totally fascinating. And let's be honest, older boys too. I mean, we're pretty fascinated yeah. by this. But one of the markers of this is the author doesn't shy away from the more graphic parts of no, the Bible. No, I, I think there's instances in the Testament here where he goes out of his way to yes. illustrate some of the more. You got a, a good illustration uh, there. So you you a, know what? I could pull one up here. I, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll probably won't take long. You know, if you go to the Revelation, I mean, you know, you've got dragons eating people. There's beheaded people with sores there. People falling into a lake. Yeah. And, In fact, here, let's get a close-up of one of this. And as we do get that, um, it kind of made us ask the question. You know, I tell my daughter a story every night, and I try my best to tell her a Bible story. Now, right now, she's currently fixed on Jonah and the whale. So that one's pretty safe. Yeah. But every once in a while, we'll be reading different children's Bibles, and we'll come across a Bible story that has a lot of adult content. And fortunately, it will censor the content. Yeah. But it's not uncommon to find myself in a situation where I'm telling a Bible story and I realize, like, I have to really censor this story yeah. for my audience. Yeah. And I don't know how I always feel about that when yeah. I'm not telling the whole Bible story, but I'm still trying to get the big idea across. Right. And you're you ever, editing the Bible. Yeah. And I, I'm pretty sure that's not a good thing yeah. in a general sense. The, but. the other part of this, and I think this is where it, kind of the, it comes up even more, we as children's leaders, we want our kids to read the Bible. We want them to own a Bible, to pour over it, to read it, ideally read the whole Bible, right? Right, right. But admittedly, there's parts of the Bible that are not necessarily age appropriate by yes. all standards. So the question is, is the Bible too graphic for kids? <laughs> uh, so Dan, <laughs> I have a question for you. Yeah. Is the Bible too graphic for kids? Well, I think on one hand, we would find ourselves saying, the Bible is God's word. Every word of the Bible is important, and every word of the Bible is, is useful for training and teaching and, and guidance. But I know I have edited the Bible myself uh, in this way. Every week uh, for my kids at church, I write um, or have somebody help me write out some uh, uh, passages that the kids can read. And the idea is to give them bite-sized chunks so that they don't have to open up this huge book and figure out where to read. They can just follow along. It also leads into where we're teaching on Sunday. But part of that job is going through skimming the passage to make sure there's not sexual content extreme violence, yeah. incest, adultery, words that may be uncomfortable for parents to talk about with their kids. We edit the Bible. Yeah, we do. And I, I remember at some point of my young adulthood, I discovered Song of Solomon. Yeah. And that was like the most fun thing to do was read out loud these inappropriate passages in youth group because they were hilarious to yeah. any young teenage boy. And it was in the Bible. In fact, I have a family member who firmly believes that if any word is in the Bible, it's okay to just use <laughs> at will. <laughs> uh, King James and King included. James. Well, that's the version so, to use if you have that philosophy. It granted a certain latitude for this unnamed person to use words that otherwise might not be appropriate in normal conversation or life as a uh, as a Christian man or woman, whoever this person might be. And so it kind of begs the question, the question again, like, is the Bible yeah. like, and so let's say this, obviously there's stuff that's not appropriate for kids. They're not developmentally ready for it emotionally, sure. etc. So do we skip over it or do we censor it? 
or do we even in some instances exploit the content for yeah. our own uh, kind of novelty factor? Well, here's here's an interesting perspective, and we we talked about this Bible when we reviewed kids' Bibles uh, a few months ago. Yeah, this is the NIV Bible for boys. Yes, and what they do, the strategy they do is. They take gross out stories and highlight them. Yeah. And say, Ew, here's a gross part. King Eglon was so fat that Ehud's sword was swallowed up. What they're, they're trying to do here is they know eight to 10 year old boys thrive on this stuff. Yeah. So, where you might go, Well, this is too violent. They say, no, read this part because they know if they can trigger the interest of a boy, he'll read the yeah. Bible. Well, and for me, when I tell Bible stories to young boys, that 8 to 10 year old group, yeah. I don't shy away from that stuff. If there's a war and a battle, I talk about the weapons and the fighting. You know, I don't go into gory detail, but I do make sure to mention some of that stuff because I know it's going to capture their imagination. Yeah. And they're going to pay attention in a way that they might glaze over and really not appreciate for example, what uh, Joshua and Caleb did as they led the Israelites through the promised land, conquering territories, or yeah. as King David defeated and fought enemies. They don't, you know, there's intrigue and, and politics and all this sort of stuff that is extremely popular, but um, often kind of maybe understated in the scripture. And I want to, in this example, make the point of stating it. I don't yeah. know. I mean, it's just kind of an interesting balance. Yeah. And, and uh, that, that, uh, even going back to this, we might take the strategy, okay, you know what, we might not agree or have would have put all these things in, but if a kid reads through this thing, they're reading real scripture. I mean, this is from the Bible, words from the Bible. Yeah. And they have gross, gory pictures with them. Some of them are sexualized pictures or things like that. Uh, and you have to draw the line somewhere. But the point is, they're reading the Bible. Yeah. And, and I think the question there is, we're not manipulating, right? No. God put this stuff in the Bible mm-hmm. for a reason. The reason is it's real life. It relates to us. Right. It's maybe even you could say interesting to us. Yeah. It, well, it's and it's again going back to the idea of this. These are a series of stories. You know, I think we can we can present a gospel that is like clip art gospel. Right. <laughs> Here's the ten very quaint. Bible verses you need to know. Yeah. They're, I mean, not quaint. I mean, that, that diminishes them. They're not quaint. They're just very self-contained, very snapshot images. And boom, boom, boom. You have the whole, whole picture. Here's Jesus as a baby. Click a picture. Here's Jesus as the teacher, the, the Messiah. Give him, yeah. Take a picture. Jesus on the cross. Jesus. And then you have the early church. You, you can take like 10 snapshots and get the whole picture. Yeah. But what you miss out on is the story, the narrative. Yeah. And I think if you, if you do that to like the New Testament, for example, I think the Old Testament loses significance hmm. in the fact that there's this like major narrative that's being carried on from Genesis 1-1 all the way through the end of Revelation. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever hear the Tim Hawkins comedy routine where he talks about how popular it is to decorate your nursery with Noah's Ark? And really no. that the story of Noah's Ark is the story where 99% of the world was died <laughs> died in a tragic flood, right? right. They, they leave out the screaming people, but they don't paint that on the wall. <laughs> <they're> drowning. <laughs> <laughs> but th- this is a this is a fascinating question. At what point do we edit out things that are in God's word? At what point do we leave them in for the motivation to read it? Yeah. So a question to you guys: What? Where do you draw the line yourself in your ministry? Yeah. Um, is it by age? Is it by you know? I mean, you're obviously at some level editing it for your audience. How do you? What do you tell your teams as they are asked to teach a story? Maybe you've written your own curriculum. It'd just be interesting to kind of get your guys' feedback on how you draw the line and where you draw it at. It would be. Maybe if you if you need some motivation, go to Judges 13, read through the story of Samson, and talk about what you would and wouldn't include yeah. in, your, in your kids. Another illustration of a group doing this, the Action Bible. They've made a comic version out of the Bible. Illustrated. It's very beautiful. Um, again, we can kind of get a close-up on this. Just pictures of uh, Samson fighting and killing guys, and th- they don't use a lot of blood or gore necessarily, but the action and violence is all in there, which of course is part of the story. Yeah, interesting, interesting discussion. Hey, it's uh, fall. We've got a big event coming up here in the Northwest, the Fusion Conference. We do we do? Tell what is the Fusion Conference? Fusion Conference here? is a conference of leaders, a leadership conference here, hosted this year uh, in Renton in the Seattle area, yep. and it uh, brings together children's ministry leaders, church ministry leaders from all. Uh, denominations and, and background uh, just for learning together, growing together, and inspiration. It is, totally. So if you're, uh, you got to check it out. Go to nwministry.com. You can see there if you go to ministry 
Ministries children down the bottom is our Fusion tab and it has just a description of what the event is. Um, this year, uh, we're doing a couple things different this year for the conference. And again, if you've never been, it is so well worth it. Um, we are this year, um, we have a discount for, we have like a group rate. Yeah. We really want people to come as a team. Now, th this, this event's been going on for, I don't know, close to 10 years now. Mm -hmm. But in its origin, it was really a retreat for pastors to go to, it was a smaller group of children's pastors. It was a venue for them to relax, kind of get a break, just be together and be encouraged. But as children's ministries in the Northwest has grown, the event has kind of grown and transitioned to more of a training venue. Yeah. And with that change comes the importance of people bringing their teams, even to the point of where uh, we want students, we want young people in high school to come. Now, Thursday night, Friday, Saturday makes it difficult for a lot of high schoolers to be a part of. But regardless of that, we are so compelled to engage this kind of next generation of leaders. We've set a very like minimal price for the event. So for 25 bucks, yeah. we want students to come out and be a part of it. And that includes full access to the whole event. We have a series of keynote speakers. We have a series of labs. We have 20 different labs that if you want to be a part of the lab, um, it's kind of a workshop setting, a small group. And we also have, for the first time, a Friday night party that is sole purpose is to be and have fun. I like that. <laughs> yeah. That's great. So we got some music, we have an improv team coming, we got some food trucks rolling up so people can grab some grub, head back into the building, hang out. It's going to be really fun and I think it's going to be uh, uh, definitely one of our coolest fusions we've had. Absolutely. Yet. We'll have the brick testament there that uh, you can you can uh, thumb through. Yeah, it'll be, know, maybe. Yeah, well, definitely. We'll have a couple of them set out. And even this year we're doing something, even another thing we're trying a little different. Um, we have the price for high schoolers, we have the Friday night party. This year we're hosting some workshops in Spanish. We've okay. actually sent promotional material out in Spanish, realizing uh, our churches here in the Northwest, um, a lot of them have either are a Spanish-speaking congregation or host a Spanish-speaking congregation. And there's a real felt need to provide resources to the whole of our network, even those who speak Spanish as a native language or have an audience uh, in a Spanish setting. So. On Friday and Saturday, there's going to be workshops in Spanish for those who um, uh, are so inclined. And in fact, even if you go to our website, you can see we have the whole site promoted in Spanish as well. Um, if you click that button there, I can show you here. So here's our same kit, uh, the Fusion thing set up in Spanish to make sure that we make that connection with those churches as well. I love it. It is going to be, I think, our most interesting group of leaders we've ever had. And I think we have some of the most interesting keynote speakers we've ever had, workshops we've ever had, and the most fun environment we've ever it's had. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's going yeah. it to be awesome. Yeah, join us for the weekend. Great conference, great price, uh, great people to be with. It's going to yes. be awesome. Cool. All right. Well, hey, thanks for listening with us, watching with us today. Uh, join the conversation. Leave a comment. Uh, send us an email at cmjumpstart at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, and we'll see you soon. See you soon. And remember, you can check out all of this episode and previous episodes at our at our YouTube page showing up here. Um, if you just go to YouTube.com, type in CM Jumpstart, you'll see all the episodes going down. I think we're getting close to 30 different videos on there. So it's a great tool for you to just check out yourself or content to share with your team. Have some cool questions everybody as well. Okay.